EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, on a much nicer day than the last time I was recording, I believe. Not so much wind and it's a little cool. Hey, I want to thank you, though, for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Hope you're nice and comfy and got a, some time to spend over the next half hour or so as I review this brand new 2022 BMW iX xDrive 50. It's a wonderful machine. First, I want to start by saying thank you very much to BMW Canada for the, again, the, the loaner of this press vehicle. Been able to spend a few days driving it around, poking and prodding and doing all the things that uh, we do here on car reviews to try to provide as much information to you as I can from a more heavily EV slanted perspective. So again, thanks very much for taking the time. Let me get right into the review. Now, as I mentioned, this is all new for BMW. It's the first all-electric mid-size crossover that they're coming out with. Uh, it was originally unveiled actually at the Paris Auto Show in 2018 under the concept name of the Vision I Next. So um, I think they haven't strayed too far away from that vision that they had of the I Next at that time, putting it here into the iX. Now with all wheel drive as a standard offering on this vehicle, BMW iX provides luxury and refined minimalism. And you can see that in the overall design here of this vehicle. It's got cutting edge technology, especially compared to some of the other BMWs that are out there. And it does provide maximum comfort in this, I don't know, BMW says monolithic design, but actually, I don't know, I really, really like it. It's, it's grown on me quite a lot this whole week. And it does provide this unique sense of spaciousness, which is true, especially when you're inside the cabin. This is the vehicle BMW claims of a new generation. And I can tell you by the number of looks that I got this week driving this vehicle around, whether it's the polarizing front kidney grill or something else, I think the overall package looks great. And I got a lot of people looking at that and giving me a thumbs up when I was driving around. So obviously that's saying something. Now staying with the exterior and the design, this is what BMW calls their first generation of their i20 vehicle platform. And it's, it's a purest form, I guess, of BMW, as they say, with minimal but characteristic lines and seemingly integrated details that boast a pioneering spirit. It definitely is treading new territory for BMW. What's more, there's the front T-shape with the slimmest headlamp, headlamp lamp strips, that's what I'm trying to say, ever built by BMW. They really are slim, and but they work excellently. Combine that with the expressive upright double kidney. Again, a lot of people will love or hate this. You've got recessed door handles. You've got frameless doors. And generously rectangular contours of the wheel arches create, uh, unite to create a confident modern aura. That's the marketing speak from BMW. But I wanted to read it because I think it holds true to this vehicle. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is all new from BMW. It's built on their electric drivetrain architecture and uh, on a, uh, in combination with an aluminum space frame. The electric platform is a totally new development from BMW, uh, as I said, though it is highly compatible with their existing modular CLAR platform, which shares some componentry um, on that platform and that allows BMW to produce the iX alongside combustion engines at the Dingelhof, Dingelhofing plant in Germany. Now the body is made out of a combination of high strength steel, aluminum thermoplastics and a lot of carbon fiber reinforced plastic to keep the weight down as low as possible even though it's a big vehicle. Now physically the iX as you can see here is it is a unique vehicle because it has a kind of DNA from some other vehicles. Kind of resembles an X5 in its length and width, but the roof height of an X6. So as you can see, I'm about five, six, five, seven. It's got a nice roof height and the wheel sizes of an X7. Now this front kidney grill gets a lot of slack. Like uh, I guess on the i4 is some of the comments. It, it really is very similar to the i4. But again, it serves as an intelligent panel, as BMW calls it, with all their radar and a lot of their sensors and technology that's 
baked in behind all this has that special coating on it that has the self-healing properties on it. You can kind of see it's almost coated in a, in a plastic uh, type of element, which when it, if it gets some nicks or dings or light scratches, things like that, uh, if you leave it in the sun for a few hours, it will kind of melt that, that technology, melt into those gaps to seal them so they'll become invisible again. Now obviously keeping the weight down and also enhancing aerodynamics will help with efficiency and range. Now this isn't going to be the most efficient vehicle on the planet, but it's pretty darn good folks and I will get to range later on. But because of all this sculpting, it does have a drag coefficient of 0.25 and that's pretty good for a large crossover SUV type vehicle that this is. Now you'll see because this is a fully electrified version, it does have some accents to highlight that. You know, some, uh, some of the badging, some coloring, things like that. It's got wonderful ambient lighting that shows at night that kind of turns heads as well inside. So it, it really is uh, not hard to figure out that this is an electric. Again, because it's a new platform, there is no uh, conversion from an internal combustion into this where you might have to put covers over where tailpipes would be, that kind of thing. This doesn't have that. It does have, you know, a nice rear uh, sculpture to it, um, but it is a very head-turning vehicle from a design and looks area. Now you'll hear me use the term shy tech and BMW has put that all over their literature. What they mean is there's different elements of newer technology that's kind of hidden within the vehicle and they're done purposely. Now, one thing I can't show you today is the engine bay or you know where it would be maybe a frunk or the motor components and the charger and the inverters and all that stuff because, because BMW does not let you open the front hood. There's no lever, there's no way to open it. You need to take it into a qualified BMW service center to do any servicing on this vehicle. Their philosophy is, look, we've got a solid battery. This is a solid electrical, electrical system. The motors are built like tanks, all that stuff. There's no reason to go in there. We'll change your cabin air filter for you. And that's probably the only thing we'll ever have to do. Uh, maybe in five years, you know, the coolant, that kind of stuff. So they purposely left that open. And I can see some people might be complaining because they like to tinker and do things themselves. But if you're, you're buying a vehicle at this price point, going in once every year or so to maybe have a $100, whatever it is, cabin air filter change, or 200 bucks is not, you know, you, I think you can afford it if you're getting this type of vehicle. So I wouldn't hold that against BMW. So the question then I get asked is, well, how, how the heck are you going to fill the windshield washer fluid if you can't open this thing? Well, they've done something unique, again, with this Shi-Tech formula. On the BMW badging up here, you just push on it and it pops open. And here is the reservoir feed for your uh, washer fluid that you'll uh, put down there and, of course, uh, stop when it fills up. Pretty, probably a fairly large tank because it not only um, w does the windshield washers in the front, there's a rear wiper, and it also will clean the camera. So there's elements here that will pop out in the front camera and in the rear camera. They'll pop out and they'll spray uh, some windshield washer fluid on that camera to keep them clean on both the front and the rear. I think that that's a fantastic idea because I'm always forgetting to wipe my rear, rear camera off when I'm walking around my Tesla because it gets so dirty after rain or snow or something like that. And half the time I you know, I'm driving and I back up and I go, oh, I can't see anything because I forgot to wipe it. It's a small thing, but I think it's a really nice feature that BMW's done. Now, one other thing you'll hear a lot in this uh, talk here is about the sustainability and the green side to BMW on this vehicle because it is a ground up design and a purpose built vehicle. This is the only vehicle that's using the platform that they're putting in this. It's made specifically for the iX. They've been really able to put a lot of thought behind their, their carbon footprint in the manufacturing and the, in the materials of this vehicle. So this uses a high proportion of recycle and natural materials um, you know, to really help with that minimalistic design and enhance that futuristic look that this has. Um, so you know, I'm going to talk a little bit more. I'm going to point out some of those things when I do the interior and other elements of the vehicle. Um, now on that sustainability note, you'll see here, here's a good example where they've used a lot of the carbon fiber elements in the door surrounds and into some of the pillars. It doesn't mean they're replacing the critical uh, structural components for crash worthiness. This will get all five star ratings pretty well across the board for both um, European and North American uh, scoring systems. But what they try to do is instead of using some metalware, they can get away with something different that's just uh, the same strength but a lot less weight. Carbon fiber uh, materials work great. So you'll see carbon fiber a lot in these kind of areas throughout the vehicle, including in the hatch. Now for the powertrain in this vehicle, 
it's utilizing BMW's fifth generation E-Drive as well. Now this has two new electric motors that are manufactured as well without the use of rare earth materials. So again, another example where BMW is trying to be as environmentally sensitive as they can and utilizing other materials where it makes sense. Now this vehicle has two battery pack sizes, either a 76.6 kilowatt hour pack, lithium ion pack, or 111.5, which is what my tester has here. As I mentioned off the top, all vehicles come with all-wheel drive dual motor offerings, but there are still some variants to choose from, and let me list them out. So you have the iX X Drive 40 version, which comes with the smaller battery pack of 76.6. It's still pretty potent though, folks, provides 322 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. With, which will give you performance-wise a 0 to 62, 0 to 100 kilometers in 6.1 seconds. But as I said in the i4, it feels a heck of a lot faster, especially with a larger vehicle like this. Now this tester is the iXX Drive 50, the mid-level trim. Um, I'm glad they gave this to me because it does have the larger battery pack at 111.5, which provides much more horsepower and torque at 516 horsepower and 564 pound-feet of torque. Again, 0 to 62, 0 to 100 times in about 4.0 seconds, and that's really close to my Model 3 dual motor, somewhere around the 4, 6, 5, 4, 5 second mark, and this is for a vehicle that's a lot heavier or heavier than my Model 3, so they've, they're doing something really well here um, in their power output. Then if you want to go crazy and you really need all that power and you just, you know, you've got BMW M products before, you love them, you want to stick with an M brand, then the M60 iX version of, of is what you want to go for. It has the same battery pack, but BMW's cranked up the horsepower and foot and torque to 610 horsepower and 811 pound-feet of torque to propel you rocket ship wise in, in about 3.8 seconds or so to those highway speeds. One thing about this is the ride is extremely comfortable. It does have electronically uh, controlled air suspension, which is standard on the XDrive 50 and the M60, um, and, uh, and very comfortable, of course. Um, and, but obviously this isn't a race car. You shouldn't treat it like a race char car and think you're gonna take it to the track and stuff. When you throw it around some twisty roadways, which of course the Germans love to do, you will feel its weight um, and, and you know into a corner and at speed and the steering is a bit light some people are saying it's a bit light for a bmw again i don't own bmws i don't drive them so to me the steering feels very fine it's very quick very reactive um, as long as it, it you know it the vehicle goes the direction i need it to go at the pace I need it to go, I don't really care how it feels, to be honest with you folks. So I think I wouldn't take that uh, too, uh, too much with a grain of salt. It works extremely well. There is a standard suspension offering packaged with the X-Drive 40 model. Now charging utilizes the same as all the other BMWs that are electrified and most other vehicles on the planet that are coming out now using the CCS standard, especially here in North America. Again, I like the way BMW has broken this out. So you have a tab that'll uncover just the J1772 portion of it for your level one, level two charging. And then if you do get to a DC fast charge, you need those extra plugs, pop that little cover off and you can DC fast charge it with HPC high power connectors and do okay. Now for level one, level two, it does support up to 11 kilowatts. And that seems to be kind of the new standard now, 11 to 12 kilowatts. Uh, for level three, if you do get the X-Drive 40 model with the smaller battery, it supports up to a peak rate of 150 kilowatts of pull. If you opt for the X-Drive 50 or the M60 versions with the bigger battery, that uh, peak DC fast charge rate will climb up to 200 kilowatts. And here's a picture of their charging curve so you can kind of get an idea of what the charging element. It's very similar, I believe, to the i4, probably maybe a tad better. And again, when you look at the max pulls and how uh, the time it takes to step down to get closer to 80%, um, BMW claims 10 to 80 percent for these larger vehicles with the larger packs uh, in about 35 minutes. I think that's very respectable to keep that target around that 30 minute mark because 80 percent on this will probably get say 375 to 425 which again is another three or four hours of driving potentially wherever you're going. So let's quickly talk about cargo and storage. You don't really buy a vehicle of this size unless you're either hauling people and hauling stuff or a combination of both, and that's what they're for. And this is uh, no slouch when it comes to cargo area. 
Now this does have a couple of options. Obviously it has a power lift gate option, but it also has the foot option. Now I have the battery key fob, I have the key fob in my pocket and it's supposed to work. So far it's been working all the time, but let's see if it works when I'm trying to do this on camera. You just take your foot, you put it underneath and then you step back and there we go. It beeps or it lights up at you and, and off it goes. Now it's not opening that high because I actually have it set for this height folks because I've been parking the car in the garage and if I go any higher, I'm gonna bonk the garage door. That's under, that's above there. So this can go a lot higher. It can go another probably four or five inches higher and you can clear this. So I've been a little con conscious of just loading and unloading because of that in the vehicle. I don't wanna scratch it. But one thing I like, I can push it up more of course so you can see how far, far it goes. Now you can see it's got a cavernous um, cargo area, you know, by the, this class of vehicle standards. If you leave, the, just put cargo the way it is now, you get 200 liters or 17.6 cubic feet of cargo volume. And that's again showing BMW's 40, 20, 40 split seats in the second row. If you do fold those down completely, you can get 1,750 liters or 61.8 cubic feet. And that's a lot of storage space. This parcel post or this uh, tray comes out nice and easy if you want to take it out. This, uh, th one thing I like is that this is attached to the hatch so when it folds down, it automatically covers this portion of the cargo area from prying eyes. So it's a nice feature. Now there is some under storage here as well and it's a decent size. It's not as deep as the Model Y if we use that as an example, but it's deep enough to put the, the uh, charging cable uh, some other small components. I even have a winter snow brush under here because they left me one. Um, luckily, I haven't needed it since June, since I, I picked this up before we had some snow last week, which is another story. Uh, but so it's got some stuff that you can put away, some side cubbies and things like that, um, probably to peel out, uh, coat hooks and things like that, tie down straps. So it's nicely organized and it's a really good use of space back here. One other thing I wanted to quickly highlight was the integration of the second set of rear lights here. As you can see, the rear lights are part of the hatch, so when it goes up, they're not there. So the idea from BMW is that if you're stopped on the side of the road and you're having to change a flat tire or whatever, you have to just stop, you have your hazards on, you're doing something, getting stuff out of the back here, uh, these will continue to flash and illuminate at night and just to give you more visibility. I think it's a cool thing, not everybody does that, but I think it's something nice that uh, BMW has done. Again, here you can see some use of carbon. Uh, carbon fiber elements into the sides here. Uh, so again, BMW util utilizing a lot of that where, where they can um, to save weight, of course. All right, so let's move into the interior. But before I do that, I'll do my getting into the rear seat test as I always do, just to see how comfortable it is. I think you have a good camera view here. So uh, as you can see, big doors here, they open uh, almost 90 degrees, just slightly shy of 90 degrees here. So a nice big entrance way. Obviously some more carbon fiber elements as you can see around the bottom of the doors. A nice welcoming space, flat floor. So already I can see there's lots of foot space there. I have the front seat set where I would have it. In fact, I have a little farther back than I usually do, just kind of getting comfortable. But hey, is this easy to get into or what? Like, it doesn't really get much easier than that, folks, of getting in and out of a vehicle. Uh, no problem, I've got Gia Fist fist and a half at least of headroom in here. Um, tons of leg room as you can see. So just a quick video of the interior. I'll probably th throw some B-roll in here too, but as you can see, it's a very nice interior element. The use of high quality materials is, is you know, everywhere in this vehicle. Uh, you've got your door controls for your seat, memory seatings. Uh, each side has the same thing. Then there's also software controls in the menu to do even more things with the front seat, massage, more lumbar support, all that kind of stuff is there. You've got your door and lock and lock and like Tesla and others where you have this electronic uh, unlock button to pop the door open and then push it open. And then your, of course, standard window and mirror controls are here. Nice storage pockets. You know, I complained about the, um, the i4 last time having really small door pockets, but this thing has a lot. I've got some stuff in here. I've got a you know pretty big water holder that slides in very nice. This is a trunk release. And then also in case, one thing BMW has thought of is if in case of a power outage, if you absolutely run out of every single power that's on board here, including the 12 volt, you do have a manual emergency uh, release button to open the doors manually in case you need that, which is a nice feature. 
Now this has the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which is amazing. Again, everything that's when you put the word amazing and BMW together means it's an option package that you're going to have to pay for at somewhat, but it's worth it. In my opinion, it's a very strong product. Going into the cabin, we can look at the front seats. They're very supportive. Um, again, nice use of materials. So we quickly look at the dash. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because there's lots of videos. BMW has learning videos as well, but it's a unique environment. Again, this is a, a, a vehicle that's been ground up designed to be a unique product. So everything in here has that sense of uniqueness. Now you'll see some familiarities and buttons and controls because obviously BMW is gonna reuse those into different vehicles. But here you have your infotainment system, which again is very nice. Um, I do wanna mention on the, sorry, on the textiles and the fabrics here, again, that nice use of different te uh, textiles and fabrics. There's a, probably a multitude of color choices here. They've given this really nice soft blue. One thing that's cool, if I talk about shy tech here, is that there is a HUD display on here. Now I don't have it on because the car is off right now, but it's hidden. You don't see the glass like you would normally see. There a screen pop up or the glass here and then to project up. This is kind of built in underneath there and hidden away as they call that shy tech. So pretty cool, lots of speakers on here. I think my ears are half deaf from being blown away by having the sound so high on this vehicle. But just sticking with the interior now, I mentioned that BMW is really trying to think green on this vehicle and, and making this, this is a luxurious, relaxing, very relaxing space in here. They say it's like a lounge-like ambience and I would tend to believe them because it is very, very nice and relaxing and subtle and very soothing, if that's the word I can use here uh, with the amount. So it's got a mix of soft touch controls and some hard buttons, you know, similar center console to the i4 that you'll see that, that we saw earlier. So not really much difference other than, you know, you can get the crystal option. This has wood that kind of stuff the switcher is a little bit different it's not on the stock it's it's here um, you know a decent size center console storage tray that's pretty deep as you can see my hand goes down there and then it has a tray here wireless charging pad and stuff is under here for your phone and the cable i have a cable if you want to plug it into the to the ports and things like that so the materials and everything are nice now one thing bmw claims is that they use a lot of recycled and manufactured natural sorry materials in this all right, moving on to the a uh, little bit more of the dash. It's got this hexagonal steering wheel, which is new for BMW, and it's an interesting design. Um, I love it. <laughs> Again, they, BMW just can't go wrong with steering wheels. It's got a really nice feel to it. Um, you know, the 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 three and nine uh, elements, uh, or two and nine. I mean, it just it just works really well. Nice grip, nice feel, low, so you can get in easy when it's cut down here. The, it's not a three spoke; it's just a two spoke, but it works really well. All your standard controls are easy enough to utilize and use so i think it's it's really nice so moving away from the steering wheel i just want to quickly uh, mention that the head restraints on these seats are fixed units so um it, you'll have to try this if you're taller than me you might have an issue of your neck getting kinked it depends i've seen a couple of reviews where people have who are you know six foot two kind of six foot three um, that have found they had to put the seat back a little, recline a little bit more than they usually do because of not being able to uh, to move the head restraint like they usually do but it's not a problem for me these are absolutely very comfortable seats I've been keeping this in uh, efficient mode all the time uh, these are the three that are active it defaults to personal all the time so I haven't been able to figure out how to change the default I'm sure you can once you buy and own and register this with your BMW app and all that stuff, but uh, I've been driving it in, in efficient mode, which is nice. It uh, doesn't provide any sounds and it gets me the maximum efficiency. And I'll show you that at the end of the review. The glass panoramic roof is a really, really nice touch. As you can see, it goes all the way back here. It's a big, big roof and lots of room in that back seat and you still get good visibility out the back. Uh, so there's no problem in seeing one nice touch about this glass roof is that you can change the opacity of it. I'm not sure if it's going to come out here on camera uh, because there's not really, I'm not looking at anything above me. We have no no sun. Maybe if I, if I do this angle, uh, you'll see um, how it maybe darkens the sun a bit. If I try it, let me just see. Yeah, so that that is more, more opaque. Um, so kind of more cloudy and more uh, blurry. And then this puts it back to a more normal view, as you can see. So hopefully that kind of comes out on camera. Uh, I was going to talk about some pet peeves, um, which aren't or really are hardly anything. But I'll mention it now since I'm here. 
The one thing I don't like about this vehicle, and I kind of noticed it right away, was the location of the coffee cup holders. They're big enough, and I understand what BMW is doing with this setup, but the reality is, so if I'm the driver and I'm getting my, my cup of coffee here from our famous Canadian uh, US-owned entity now, this is where it would be. So if I'm driving, I have to go below this arised part of the console to grab my coffee. And there's no elegant way really to grab this coffee from here other than to try to lift up. Now, you have a full cup of one of these, especially a larger one. These lids are flimsy. The cups get soft. They get a little flimsy. I almost had an accident trying to pick this up with the lid coming off in my hand and coffee cup falling down, if you can picture that. So that's my only pet peeve is I think the location of this is not very good, not very conducive to making it easy. I think that they should have maybe added something here and put this phone holder taking away the phone holder and putting the coffee cups here. I understand what they were trying to do, maximize size space, but a lot of people put their phone here. They use it for navigation and, and stuff. But uh, I'm one that doesn't really, I kind of slide my phone away and just use the the enhanced, uh, the, the syncing systems for answering phone calls and things like that. So that's my, my pet peeve here. Now, as I mentioned, the back seat, you saw me get in, so I won't spend a lot of time, but it's roominess here. I just put the seat back all the way for some filming, and you can see there's still a lot of legroom there, and normally I wouldn't have the seat that far back. Um, it does have a nice armrest. Now, I'm going to continue on the coffee cup holder pet peeve. A good friend of mine who has had BMWs for decades has said the same thing, gave me that advice that BMW, they really did just don't know how to make coffee uh, cup holders very well and this may look good but uh, he tells me that based on his experience these things can break really easy over time and BMW ends up fixing them for free most, a lot of times because they get so many of these back so you all right so hope you enjoyed that good walkthrough of the vehicle maybe a bit too long but a lot of things I wanted to talk about now let's go for a drive and I'll give you some of my thoughts there all right so let me provide you with my driving thoughts here um, one thing I'm going to do is if you listen, you do hear some noise, right? That's the Hans Zimmer sound. Now, I particularly don't like that, so I'm going to switch to eco mode where it's quiet. You don't hear any of the acceleration noise as I punch it here. So that's the mode I've been driving in all the time as well as B mode. Um, and as I said uh, in my talk, similar to the i4 is the b mode is extremely smooth they have really done a, a nice slick um, implementation here of the the one pedal driving it's so easy to smoothly regulate this vehicle uh, so that you can come to a nice smooth stop and to take off uh, from an acceleration perspective nice and easy as well so I really like that because I'm all about smooth driving. Your driving habits are going to be probably different than mine. Some might like it, some may not, but it's a really great, great system. And again, if you punch it, you get that instant torque and, and that horsepower right away. So it's, it's good. Um, you know, I've been driving this for a few days now. I have not completed my range testing. Um, so you'll see that coming up uh, near the end of the show while I'll put the chart up because I'm still calculating, calculating the figures. Have lots of pedestrians it's a nice day so everybody's out for a walk today especially with the little ones which is great to see i live in a fairly active community a walking and uh, biking community so it's nice to see that now uh, as far as my driving thoughts well i've had a chance to take this on the highway a few times i've had a chance to take this in bumper to bumper downtown toronto traffic and uh, in the suburbs and everything in the country and everything in between so i've had a good run on this and what i can say as i've been saying probably like a broken record is that this thing is super quiet it's super comfortable and it just really really drives nicely now if you want it to handle you can throw it around the steering is responsive it will go it, you want to you know smash on the accelerator and go you will go <laughs> so it will give you that experience if you choose if that's the experience you want but I think for most driving cases, uh, you're not going to want to mash it all the time. You're going to want to drive nice and conservatively. So this does it. It's got ample space, beautiful seating conditions. I had no problem in finding a seating condition fairly quickly, locking it in to the controls. It has profiles and all that other stuff that you can set up. So it has similar functionality there. Um, the driving experience, again, this particular model, the, the 50 and the M60 versions, 
um, have air suspension. So this does have an air suspension. Now it, it will adjust down a little bit. I think right now it's at the highest ride height, but if you put it into sport mode and go on the highway, you can manually lower it here too, if you feel like it, but there is an option. And I believe it's about three quarters of an inch. Um, I have to go check the numbers, but it's not huge, but it's enough to, uh, again, ease up on that aerodynamic drag. If you could lower the vehicle just that little bit more. Um, and that's what BMW has designed it for. Not necessarily for getting in and out of the vehicle because it doesn't, you know, three quarters of an inch isn't that much, but it's just enough to help with aerodynamics. So I've left it on just kind of an automatic. I've seen it go up and down a couple of times on its own. I think when I hit a certain speed, if I'm on the highway, it figures I need to lower it a little bit for better aerodynamics. What else can I say about the vehicle? The controls, as I mentioned, everything here is easy to touch, easy to use. Again, similar to the i4, it's a set it, set and forget for 80% of the features in here. The automatic wipers work really well. This one does have the adaptive cruise uh, control and the lane keeping assist. Uh, so on the other one, the i4, I kept saying lane keeping, but it's actually a lane departure warning. So I kind of get those two mixed up. The lane departure warning will beep at you and give you haptic feedback and visual feedback if you drift into a line. Uh, and then it will take corrective action to bonk you over, to, to knock you out for a sec of that line, unless you're really aggressively going at it. This. So that's um, lane departure warning and, and some assist features there. Lane keeping is where it's going to center you or keep you in, in the lane nicely as you're driving um, from a semi-autonomous perspective. So this has both those systems. The i4 did not have the lane keeping, but only the lane departure warning. This has both systems, but the lane keeping um, assist works really well. Um, so here's a quick video on that in the ACC. I'll just quickly show you the um, adaptive uh, cruise control and the lane keeping functionality in the iX here. It's very good. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm not touching the wheel and the green steering wheel is on. Now it turns yellow about 10, every 10, five to 10 seconds and you have to kind of nudge the wheel. So it's a torque sensor on the wheel, typical. Uh, so it, it, a couple of things, it doesn't beep, but it um, shows that yellow steering wheel when it's time to nudge it. And then you'll also see on the steering wheel here that LEDs will light up uh, yellow and then they'll go red at some point as it counts down as a reminder to grab the wheel. And then also in the HUD, if you can see that, let me try to zoom in here because um, it's a bit sunny today so you might not see that. I've got the nav on, but when the um, adaptive uh, or the lane keeping goes off, you'll start seeing a flash there and it'll ask you to grab the steering wheel if that comes out okay. So, so one of the function this has is automatic lane change. I've turned that on. So when I'm in the adaptive um, cruise, the lane keep assist with the green steering wheel. Let's say I want to change to the right lane. I just don't fully click the uh, turn stock. I just lightly click it. It starts turning. And as you can see, just kind of nudge it. And then it did that all on its own. And then it's done. All right, so I didn't grab the wheel fast enough, so I'm gonna to have to take over. But uh, it's a pretty smooth system. It does the checks and then changes the lanes. I just wanna show you the adaptive cruise in city driving. So I'm not touching any of the pedals. Obviously I'm steering because I just have adaptive cruise set here on a city street. And um, it starts on its own, uh, nice and smooth. And then as I get to a pending traffic here, it brakes on its own using regenerative braking and the friction braking, I believe, for the most part, and then takes the vehicle to a nice smooth stop. I haven't touched any of the pedals in this whole minute here. So it's a really nice uh, system as well for stop and go traffic, which Autopilot in, from Tesla is famous for, a lot of people use. Um, I don't use it a lot in this kind of traffic, but I'm just testing it just to see, and it's actually nice smooth system. So probably one of the smoothest, if not the smoothest system that I've experienced so far, because I find with a lot of these adaptive crews, they tend to want to get up to speed re really fast and then they break really late. So you get this, you know, uh, back and forth um, action um, a little bit too much. So this is a nice smooth mo uh, modified acceleration when you're starting off in traffic and then the braking starts early enough so that it's not too aggressive. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that part of the video. Again, it's a great system, works really well. BMW has done a great job in refining that. 
Um, what else can I tell you from a driving? So unfortunately I can't take this out on a track and kind of put it through a little bit more paces, but I can tell you that this vehicle has ample, again, power and acceleration and mobility to drive you wherever you need to go. Uh, with the X-Drive four-wheel drive, putting a really good set of snow tires on here and, and having that slightly, that height adjustability, it's got a nice ground clearance already. You'll have no problem in winter driving this vehicle, um, even through some, some fairly significant snows. Uh, again, you always have to understand your limits of the vehicles, but uh, you'll have no problem in this as a Canadian winter car by far. It's extremely comfortable. So if you have a family, um, you need you know the five seater or you need more than just it's more than just two people for a lot of the time this is a very very comfortable vehicle it's extremely easy to drive you know I like the fact again that BMW and the manufacturers are making these vehicles so that you can just get in and drive and not really think about them being electrified you know giving that similar driving experience to people that are used to internal combustion driving for years those that love the BMW brand, getting them into a vehicle that has a nice high quality fit and finish, has a, a beautiful driving feedback and, and driving feel to it, yet retains a level of comfort, a level of elegance, and a le level of luxury, of course, at this price point that this vehicle has. It has it in spades again, folks. Um, the BMW has done a fantastic job in just providing that, that EV experience where you get the benefits of everything that an EV brings and still a, a wonderful driving experience. So well done BMW. Now let's go back to uh, the latter part of my review. All right, so before I get to final comments, I hope you enjoyed all that driving stuff. Uh, I did want to mention again the BMW app. I'm not going to show it. There's there's information on the web, but it works really well. So uh, BMW has done a good job with that app. It's just as well good as Tesla. So if you're familiar with those apps, I encourage you to look into that. Now, as I mentioned that these vehicles come in uh, different trim modes. So let's talk about pricing for a sec. If you look at the iX xDrive 40, the base MSRP on that is $79,990. If you look at this version, the base is of the iX xDrive 50 starts at $89,990. And if you want to feel hungry and really want to spend that suitcase full of money on the M60 base, that will get you a price starting point of $121,750. So definitely a big leap. Now, as always with BMW and a lot of other car companies, there's lots of different packages and options and codes that you can add to your work order, to your purchase sheet to drive the price up. This one has a bunch of options as well. And my tester came in at just over $113,000 uh, before you're any destination fees and taxes. The iX, of course, being a higher price premium vehicle does not qualify for any of the Canadian federal um, incentives of $5,000. I don't believe it qualifies for any of the provincial ones here in Canada as well. I don't, but you'd have to double check uh, in Quebec or BC or some of the other provinces what their limits are. I don't remember, but I think this is too high for that. But again, if you're starting to spend 100K or more or ish in a vehicle, you're not too, too concerned about incentives. All right, so let me get to the summary and wrap up on this episode. Um, excellent range for this vehicle. As you can see, it's been doing really, really well. You could charge this up to 80, 85, let's say even 90% and get a ton of range on this that's gonna last you. It's been really good on the efficiency for what this vehicle is. Remember, it's a, it's a heavier vehicle, but it's been really good on the efficiency side based on that weight. I, would, I, I don't remember what Model X numbers are, but I would say they're, this is in that kind of range. The build quality is really good, all that kind of stuff. It's a BMW, it 
looks it to a point, it feels it, it drives like it. It's just a solid product to look at. Very comfortable and extremely roomy. So if you want to drive around in comfort, you want to drive around in a nice quiet space, or you want to have a concert-like music experience while you're driving around, this is the product that's going to give that to you in spades. It's still fast, folks. Even in eco-efficiency mode, uh, this particular mid-trim mid model is extremely fast. Nice, smooth acceleration and braking. Gain a very pleasant driving experience. I can't stress that enough how smooth this vehicle is. And that's if there's any word I'm going to describe this BMW, it's smooth and silky. As you saw, lots of room and lots of comfort for even three adults to go back there quite easily good enough and big enough boot space you can tow with this so you can do a lot with this vehicle throw a rack on it throw cargo carriers skis whatever it will do it all folks it'll take all that stuff for you with a nice boot space and the rear hatch has a wiper so it's good to see some wipers coming back in some products whether that's a big thing or not you know with with a with a really good uh, a decent good charging curve that this has being able to pull up to 200 kilowatts and getting you that 10 to 80 percent in about 30 to 35 minutes i think is it makes this a really high valuable road tripping vehicle with a range of up to 300 miles you know to drive three to four hours of driving stop for half an hour and then repeat i think that's very adequate for long road trips and this will really do it in nice style um, are there competitors? Absolutely. The Tesla Model X, you're, the Mercedes just announced their EQS SUV, so it's going to be a similar size and structure as this. Uh, I could even say the Porsche um, Sport, uh, the Porsche Taycan Sport Turismo as well, and the models and the variants there could be a rival because they have extra storage space in them and they're just as fast. The Audi e-tron, of course. So these things will work. I could even lump in the Rivian One uh, R One S into this. Whereas BMW is going to start shipping these this summer and into the fall. They're going to start prepping dealers already. So I haven't seen any of these on the road yet, but they're imminent. I know you can go on the BMW website to register, to put in a reservation, and their plan is to start kicking these out by the summer or fall time frame. So good options. I'm glad that there's more options for choice. What's my final recommendation? Well, hey folks, of course I'm going to recommend this product. I mean, it's not going to be for everybody, right? 100 grand is not cheap money, no matter how you slice it. But there is a large luxury vehicle segment in North America, in, in the world, uh, especially North America, Europe, and Asia pack. They are big on buying crossovers, SUVs, and more luxurious styles of those. So I think BMW is going to do well. I have no idea how many they're going to produce, but I'm sure that there'll be a bit of a waiting list for something like this as well. And I want to again say thank you to BMW for allowing me the use of this vehicle. It's been an incredible vehicle to drive absolutely a joy to drive vehicle and I'll 100% recommend it. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for sticking it out. I know they can get a little long, these reviews, but try to give you a lot of my insights and cover off some of the details as I can. So if you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate it. If you have not subscribed, please do click the bell to be notified. You'll know when new episodes like this hit the air. Appreciate it. If you are a Patreon supporter, you know who you are. Thank you very much for your support. Also, thank you to my sponsor uh, that you heard at the beginning of each and every episode here. I really appreciate them sponsoring me. And for you to, again, watch the show. Keep your eyes on the EV market. There's, man, there's so much stuff going on. I can't cover it all on my own, but I try to do the best I can. So until the next episode, please, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.